Want to be number one in the number one game of all time? Well, I've got you covered here at the World Series of Board Gaming's How to Win series, where we're going to give you all the tips and tricks you need to get you on the right foot towards victory. Brass Birmingham is a phenomenal game. There's a reason why it is number one on Board Game Geek. You can see my own personal scores up there. There's a reason. It is because it is a tactical masterpiece. If you've ever played Brass or you've been overwhelmed by Brass or you happen to find yourself in the semifinals of the World Series of Board Gaming playing a game that you are unfamiliar with, well, you will be certainly glad that you watched this video series. Of course, before we begin, I would be remiss if I didn't remind you about this. You could win your share of $100,000 in cash and prizes just for playing board games. The World Series of Board Gaming is back and bigger than ever. High level play, friendly competition, national championships, there's no other event of its kind. Are you the next big name in board gaming? Get your tickets now at WSBGVegas.com and use the code EARLYBIRD to save up to $100. So what are you waiting for? It's time to get in the game. That's right, Early Bird ticket sales are still happening. You can still get your tickets for 2024 and you can still save yourself $100 off of that stay and play package. Get your tickets now. What are you waiting for? You know you're going to sign up. You know you're going to come to Vegas for an awesome time. I was just at PAX Unplugged. And I can tell you that if you get our stay and play rate, not only do you save $100, but you also get a hotel that is cheaper than quite a few other conventions out there. Plus, you get a chance to win $25,000 just for playing board games. Come on, or tons of other cash and prizes. I'm so, so excited about the event, but I'm equally excited to talk to you about Brass. If you haven't signed up for our newsletter, well, let me tell you, it, it, this will give you all the links that you need to study up on brass links to the 2022 final and the 2023 final, seeing the differences between a four-player game, which was in 2022, and a three-player game in 2023, distinctly different strategies, really distinctly different experiences of the game. Plus, there was the semi-final game of brass, where you can see some players who may not have made it into the brass tournament, who might be a little bit new to the game, taking on a couple of people who are a little bit more knowledgeable about the game, who are giving them tips, who are giving them tips in the semi-final game, the game that gets you to the table to play for $25,000. The opponents are still giving tips. That's how fantastic our event is. You're not going to want to miss this one. So sign up for the newsletter and make sure you check out all the action to study up. And maybe you can see a few of these tips being applied here. So let's get into the tips. These are tips that I've picked up through watching these high-level players play through my own play. I feel like I'm a, I'm a decent brass player. Uh, brass might be a tournament that I would enter. I would have a lot of fun playing against players of this caliber and trying my metal against them and seeing how far I could go. And so tip number one, something that you will see in both the 2022 and the 2023 games a very, very key tip is to develop early. You can see the board right here. This is your own personal player board. This will tell you the, the ways on which you can level up your buildings. But the key to brass is very similar to a key for splendor. It's ignoring your level one buildings or your level one cards. A very, very common first move in Brass Birmingham is to develop these first two beer off of your board. You're always going to need beer. You're always going to want beer. But if you get your level two buildings on the board in your first age, you will score double their points. You'll score double their points. You'll score 10 points instead of five. It's a huge boon to be able to get your level two buildings out. And more importantly, you will establish those networks and those choke points and it will create the basis for your iron age getting a level two building on the board is so much more important than just getting a level one building on the board sometimes it makes sense sometimes it'll give you an income bump sometimes it's okay but really focusing on developing and getting rid of those level one tiles so that you can put the level two tiles on the board is huge it's all about action efficiency and it's all about making the most of your money 
And that's why one of the most common opening moves will be to develop those two beer. And I know it feels like you want to save that beer. It feels like you want to save that beer because in the second age, you get to have two beer on it. But in this age, you only get to have one beer on it. It doesn't matter. Having the building out early is so key. Any of these buildings, it's so key to leaving them on the board so that you can double down on their points. So that's number one. Number two, tip number two is all about manipulating the turn order. You'll see right here, you can see some money drop down. These are the iron clays from the deluxe edition of brass. But something you'll see a lot of in the 2023 final is people fighting to manipulate that turn order and to use that turn order to their advantage. This matters a lot. Whenever you're going first, you don't know how much the other players are going to bid. And so you're setting this standard of how much you've bid and then the other players can respond by spending less that turn, leapfrogging over you. If you're in last place, this is a way for you to manipulate your turn order to get the money that you need to make a quick strike on your opponents. And so you'll often see somebody in last place taking a loan or developing or building something small, paying attention to the amount of money spent so that they can go first next time. A good rule of thumb is seeing if you can do three actions back to back. Sometimes four actions back to back to make them completely effective and completely efficient isn't possible. But if there's an option to do three actions back to back, generally that will always be better than two options back to back, especially if you're dealing with clutch choke points. Assume that everybody around the table also has a grasp of the game and can see where the valuable spots are on the board and are going to work hard to get to those spots. You don't want to leave yourself open for someone to moving in and cutting you off because cutting you off makes sense in this game. Cutting you off and hacking away your points and making it so that you're one turn short of doing that explosive move that you really wanted to do, that makes sense in this game. And so you want to not leave yourself exposed to these sorts of things. And one way to do that is by manipulating the turn order and paying close attention to it. Take a loan, build a small little route connection, and then spend your big bucks on the next turn now that you've established yourself and you know that you're going first. And speaking of taking loans, let's move to number three, which is take loans. And more importantly than that, it's knowing that the income in this game, the income track, this is the victory point track right here, but the income track over here doesn't matter as much as you think it does. One of the reasons, one of the huge reasons why I love this game is because I do not see many games where taking a loan is integral to winning the game. It is. 30 bucks in this game is a lot of money. The amount of income that you'd have to go around the board to start generating 30 bucks is enormous. And so there's a reason you'll see people down here in the negative eight income at some point in time because they've taken two loans, they've taken a chunk of money, and they're not worried. People will finish their game at zero income because income doesn't matter. It's not points. What matters are the point values. And if you can eke out that money, and not have to give up too much of it by creating those little income bouncing back, you'll be in a much more favorable situation. It also is always more favorable to take loans near the beginning of the game than it is near the end of the game because it's easier to get your income track back into the positives. And so clever players are going to pay attention to that, when to take loans, not being afraid to take a lot of them and not being afraid of your income marker being in the negatives. Tip number four is to not Tip number four is to not underestimate the value of network connections. You can see all these, well, maybe you can see, now let's get closer. You can see all of these rails heading in towards Birmingham. Honestly, it's not the most valuable Birmingham I've ever seen, but that's okay. The reason why all these rails are heading in towards Birmingham is because each one of these rails is going to be worth five to six points in this spread. When I was first learning the game, I paid a lot more attention to buildings than I did networks. I, I kind of sloughed them off. I tried to get the building points down, not realizing that sometimes it was a lot more cost effective to get points by building networks. If you think about it, if you think if you build one rail in the Iron Age, it's going to cost you $5. You can see it uh, over here on the, the top. It's going to cost you $5 and a coal. 
the coal, which can range from one to eight. Maximum $13, but these, these $13 can sometimes be worth eight points. And even if we look at a level three ironworks that requires you to build it, it only gives you seven points, right? Networks, when you put those into perspective, this level two box only gives you five points. This level two coal only gives you two points because coal is generally used for income generation. But when you put it into that perspective, the value of these networks suddenly becomes really apparent. In the final, the max networks that were gotten, the max number of network points that were accrued in the final were 62. And then the final total for buildings was 75. It's almost a 50-50 split. Well, it's a 62 over 75 split. That's what it is. But knowing the layout of the board, knowing where the most likely tokens and goods that are going to be flipped will appear, calculating those networks and planning for them and getting them out before your opponents can be equally important, if not more, than locking down that specific building. Tip number five, and there's going to be six tips because I just can't help myself, but tip number five has to deal with board position. We'll stay on this picture for now. Specifically, the Tuxeter up here. The Tuxeter is a great spot. <laughs> it's one of my favorite spots in the game, and it's a clutch for people to play because there are two rails exiting from it. From it. So that means in the canal era, there are two spots for beer, and no way to access that beer. This is a safe, secret beer spot for the players to claim and keep on their own in their own little corner of their own little world. This is even more exciting and important in a three-player game, which was our 2023 final, because, as you can see, there's only one Tuxeter card in the game. And this is also important to note when you're thinking about strategic choke points in the game, looking at this player aid sheet, seeing the number of cards that are out there also indicates the number of competition that's going to be out there or how quickly you have to strike using your scouted wild cards. Also, no matter what, Tamworth and Walsall will only have one card in any player count. That's important to note. Birmingham will always have three cards, whereas Nunton and Redditch also only have one card, one chance to be accessed. And so this is really important because it, it, it allows you a little bit of safety if you manage to hold those cards in your hand. You can base your strategy knowing that you have that locked down. You know you can expand there later. You know that's your safe haven. And you also know that if you want to deliver from these places, you're going to have to figure out a way to connect to them. Remembering what cards are not in play, depending on the player count, is also pretty important as well. Knowing that you can expand there later or knowing that you will need to scout if you want to have access to their very, very beneficial placements. And finally, as we scroll through these, we can see the market beer that's all left on the board just waiting to be gobbled up. The final tip is remember that this is a tactical game. And you need to use other players' resources before they do. If a player opens the door and leaves some of their resources exposed, and you can tell that they're planning on using that for a turn, make sure that you use it first. If you do, it disrupts them. Sure, it flips over their tile. And they may say, haha, perfect, I wanted you to flip over their tile. But they're lying. They wanted that tile for themselves. If a player seems to be banking on using this market tile and this market beer, see if you can get to that beer sooner. If you're employing the cotton strategy, cotton, big cotton often needs to use the market beers in order to accomplish all of its goals. It just needs to for efficiency's sake. It won't be able to produce enough beer on its own. It's got other things to spend its money on. So if you know that and you want to counter that, then just make sure you sell before they do. That might be a moment to use the market beers when you know they need them. Often you'll see that these market beers don't get touched in competitive players' games because competitive players would much rather build their own beer and flip it over and get the points and the income than get the one-time little bump from a market beer. But sometimes they're needed. Sometimes there's beer left on the table. Sometimes there's coal left on the table just waiting to be gobbled up in that iron age. And if you can use those other players' resources before they can, you're in pretty good shape into eking out a win. So those are the six tips on how to win Brass Birmingham, one of the greatest games out there. The greatest game, the number one game of all time on Board Game Geek right now. I adore this game. Every time I play, I find something new. Every time I watch a game, I find something new. I'll tell you this, my game group was quaking in fear 
when I sat down at the Brass Birmingham table because they knew that I worked for the World Series of Board Gaming. I've been watching high-level players play, and I was able to wipe the floor with them because I have up-leveled my game just through osmosis as well. So the final score of Brass Birmingham in 2023 in a three-player game was 174 points. That was the total score. That was from our winner, and spoiler alert, if you haven't watched the coverage of Brass Birmingham over on the Dice Tower, well, you should go over and check that out. Myself and two-time ring winner Nick Henning commentated on that one. Here's your spoiler for the winner. Yuka managed to pull out the win with 174 points. And if you think you could do better, well, then what are you waiting for? Buy your ticket at WSBG and you can take home one of those championship rings. That was in a three-player game. In the four-player game in 2022... The score was something like 144. A very good score. Not insurmountable. I feel very cocky and confident because the last time I played, I got 148. (laughs) And I know, I know that there's some of you out there who feel the same way. And to you, I'd say, yeah, come to WSPG, try out your skill. Who knows? Maybe you can go on the run on a run and be the best of the best. Again, don't forget that there are early bird tickets still available. Use the code early bird to save $100 off your stay and play package at wspgvegas.com. Drop your own strategy tips for brass in the comments below. Wow me with your scores and your prowess uh, because hey, I'd love to hear it. Tell me what your top score that you ever scored in brass was down below. And if you've never played brass, we'll just make it up. Make it up to make everybody else feel bad about themselves. But yeah, it's a phenomenal game. If you haven't played it, definitely go out and try it. I can't recommend it enough. And if you have played it and you think you're good, well, have I got the tournament for you. Thanks, everybody, so much for watching. My name is Chris George. Again, for tickets, go to WSPGVegas.com, and I'll see you there to get in the game.